I'm sorry we're late, but we've just discovered that you have milkshakes in this country. <laughs> we were enjoying milkshakes. It's, we are uh, from a third world country. And <laughs> so it's chocolate, banana, and malt. So. so thank you so much for coming here today. And I'm sure everybody enjoyed the movie. And what I find, if between the two of you, you, you first worked together in 1981 on a TV, BBC TV movie called uh, Going Gently. And here you are. This is the, what, the fifth time you've worked together? Stephen, you're, you're, yeah, right. No, just to make sure you knew where it was. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyway, uh, what has it been like, your, your uh, collaboration over the years? I mean, you've gotten two Oscar nominations, working with Stephen, with Mrs. Henderson Presents, and then Philomena, um, and hopefully with this too. Uh, what's it been like for both of you working together over the years? It's just, um, it's, it's, well, I suppose it's a bit like Queen Victoria and Abdul. It's, um, <laughs> it's, you know, well, not quite. No, it's not really <laughs> Stephen's not that young. Um, but, um, but in a way, you know, it's, it, if you meet somebody and you... The, if there is a chemistry between you and, and then at the same time you have a wonderful working relationship, we're really, you're really lucky. Mm -hmm. And you want to work with them again. And if they ask you again, you feel very, very lucky indeed. Mm -hmm. <coughs> What about with you, Stephen, working with Judy all these years? Sorry? Oh, I, I was saying Sorry. with Stephen, working with Judy. It's tough. I would imagine. <laughs> I would imagine. Someone has to do it. <laughs> but no, but with Stephen, over the years, so many of the... Um, I can't do You can't? Oh, my God. That's, we were doing better in the... Um, can you hear me better now? Yeah. Okay, um, over the years, um, you know, so many of the actresses you've worked with have gotten Oscar no nominations, with, including Judy, Helen Mirren won, you know, Glenn Close. Uh, what is, you know, you're very good about doing female-centric uh, movies a lot of the time. What is it about you that wanted you, you know, when you started directing to kind of... To well, I don't think I thought like that at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it's sort of just, it's just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's not entirely true. I remember when I made um, Dangerous Liaisons, thinking that, that the women were very, very interesting, and Glenn and Michelle. And then when I made The Grifters, actually oh. saying to the writer, it's the two women who are really interesting, uh, Angelica and, and the, oh, I hope John Cusa is not here with you. Um, uh, Angelica and Annette, and really... You know, we had a British Prime Minister for a long time. <laughs> and I think I had quite strong feelings about her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> well, can you tell me a little bit about this project? The, had you read the book, or did... I was reading that Lee Hall brought you the script. Is yes. that how it... Yes, this project came, as all the best projects do, through the letterbox. They came to me four or five years ago. And I said, this is absolutely brilliant, but two-thirds of the way through, it falls off a cliff. And I didn't know what to do. Then Lee came back a year later, and I said, this is brilliant, but it falls off a cliff. But only the cliff has somehow moved. And then he came <laughs> back two years after that. And I said, well, this is brilliant. You've solved the problems. What was the cliff that you were having? You, you were saying it fell off the cliff the first time. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but... You know, this film is like a souffle, isn't it? You keep it off the ground. You keep it in, you, it's keeping it in the air. That's what's so lovely about the film, the jokes at the beginning. And then I guess you turn over a page and it, it had gone flat. Mm -hmm. What about, I mean, with, did this cause, when the book came out, uh, when it was finally, when the book came out that this was based on, did it cause a scandal? Was it very controversial that this... Abdul had been, you know, had, and it had been hidden all those years. I didn't know it had been published. <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't think so. But I may be doing the writer a disservice. 
And for you, going back into this character after 20 years, I mean, over the years you've played, you know, Shakespearean character shop, you know, again and again, but what was it like to go back to Victoria after 20 well, years? Was after doing Mrs. Brown, which was 20 years ago, I had, I had thought that I'd... I thought that I'd done the homework on her and that I'd known about her life, of course, with Albert and all her children and then the death of Albert and then, and then her meeting with John Brown. And, and that's what, that is what most of us, I think, thought mm -hmm. was, was the, the sum of what her, uh, what her, what her lo love life was, I suppose, if you can call it love life, but her, you know, the affection things. And so this, when this book came out and, and um, you suddenly heard that in her 80s, when she was uh, still be, be, being queen, still with the pressure of, of being a monarch on her, um, tired, overweight, as she says, all those things, and not much to live for, suddenly... At the Jubilee, this young man comes and gives her a present, and they, there is something it, in the look of him, the exoticness of him, and there is something that she feels, I think, strangely, I think, something that she could have had with Bertie, but didn't. She mm -hmm. didn't have that relationship with any of her children. No. But suddenly here was a young man who she could identify with as a mother, as a wife, I suppose you could say, as a grandmother, as a great-grandmother. I mean, it seemed to me that their relationship was made up of almost every aspect of love. Well, I was reading that she, you know, she would, her, she would write certain things like your mother, you know, like on letters, but then other things were like... Signed it all, yes. Signed, but also yes. like... Hug, you know, she liked to be hugged. She yes. liked to be hold me. Hold she me. Said in one of her letters. So hold she didn't seem keep to keep me safe. She, she didn't seem to know really what their relationship no, I think, was. No, but I think that if you have that in you, if you have, if you're born with that kind of, what do you call? What do we call it? A passion in you, mm -hmm. certain that you, you know, that you can be in the kind of throes of a kind of passion. I've been mean, all my career, sixty years. I've fallen in love with people. I can't stop it. <laughs> and, 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 and you've I had some really cute people to fall, you great bet, people you to bet, fall in love with. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, but you know, if that if that is in you, mm -hmm. then how fantastic that when you're in your eighties, suddenly, uh, uh, suddenly you meet somebody who actually you can laugh with and you can relax with, you can learn from, because he was a spiritual advisor as well, and that you could say to the others, uh, just get off go away, I don't want any of you here. I'm going to actually take him up to Scotland, actually. Right. Do you know? Right. Oh. I'm sure, well, I have no doubt it prolonged her life. And why ever not, when you look at him? <laughs> <laughs> I know. And where did you, f um, Stephen, where did you find, did you go to India and, and, um, and uh, audition a lot of actors to play? Um, a I, thought it, <coughs> I thought it should be played by an Indian from India. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound ridiculous. There are a lot of Indian actors in England. The other, the, uh, Muhammad is a, I mean, he's from North London. Nothing to do with India. Um, so he, I thought it should be the real thing. So I went there and found him. And he was a, he's a Bollywood star. I mean, he's a, is he a big star in, in India? I'd, I have no idea. <laughs> he's a kind he's of young Bollywood yeah. star because he's, he's only yeah. 30 but he's now going to be an enormous star of every kind I right. reckon right. why ever not quite well when you met him and worked with him did you, what type of a relationship did you have was it I mean <laughs> I didn't mean it that way <laughs> I oh, mean I as did. a working I oh, yeah. um, well we I thought we ought to meet quietly, and we did. We, we booked somewhere to have lunch. I thought, we're going to have to work together so much, and I was very nervous, and I got there very early and sat waiting for him, and he walked in, and I, well, he can, he'll tell you himself, uh, I just gave him the most enormous hug, because immediately you, th you think, Oh, this fantastically beautiful young man, um, and and it somehow.
broke down many barriers, mm -hmm. which we uh, subsequently we found out because we were both very nervous, but we got on really fantastically well. And he, uh, Stephen, doesn't rehearse, and we, uh, he and I rehearsed a lot the Urdu mm -hmm. and the writing of the Urdu, and so. And also, Lucky. with both of you, uh, Stephen, you got the chance to to work at, to go to the Osborne uh, house. This is like the first time any movie has been shot there? I believe so, yeah. yeah did it, was, it, was it a lot of, <clears throat> did it take a long time to get that type of permission? You know, I don't know because you I wasn't involved in the negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I, perhaps I should have been. <laughs> um, I don't know what I don't know what went. I don't know why they let us in. They were sweet. They I were. I think they were pleased to see us. But there were all sorts of things we weren't allowed to do, like touch certain because we weren't allowed to touch. Because Stephen said at one point, um, at the beginning of this scene, you two sit on that sofa, and they went no. <laughs> so Stephen said what? He said no, no. Only one person sits on that sofa. <laughs> so, so we okay. Stephen rearranged it, and then he'd say. Um, if we just move that, <laughs> and then they'd all put on gloves and come, and they'd say, wh wh "Where would you like it? Where would you like it? Is that all right? Yes, that's fine." <laughs> and then there was one piece of carpet we weren't allowed to walk on. All the rest of the carpet, but just one blue border that we weren't allowed to walk on. That's <laughs> that was quite tricky. <laughs> But didn't the, the production? And Stephen design? had to wear funny things on his shoes. Oh, Everybody like those had nurses. To wear those funny things right. on their shoes. Yes, but what like a kind of secret club. Did they have? But the, the production designer did they design certain things to be put in the house or to cover? Or did you just? Well, I remember in the Durbar room, there were things that had to be covered up. I can't quite now remember what they were. Modern bits that they'd have put in to protect, you know, mm -hmm. objects. So the, yes, we were. I mean, we were constantly on the lookout for that. Not much, there, but there wasn't much of it. Right. How long did you shoot up there for? Three and a half weeks. Oh my goodness! Mm. Did that also just help with the whole to get into you know with the characters because all of with everything that had gone on there, you know, over the yes, years. Yes, and nothing had changed. If, if there is a scene, she's sitting at her in her morning room, writing at a desk, looking out of the window, her morning room, her desk her window, her landscape. Right. Well, that's, a, you know, and all the corridors and, and, uh, and um, staircases and things like that. You know, that's, there they are and they have never changed. Did you have tourists come through while they were making the movie? We, yes, we had I mean, morning, the, 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 when we the were Durba shooting somewhere, there was good, other wasn't people, it? yes. yes. No, it's not difficult. But you no, know, I was just wondering what they felt like when they saw. Well, the if Durba, they saw you. We went. To, we all got ready for the scene in the Durbar room, and then uh, Eddie Izzard came along and said to Ali and me, "Listen, come on, come on, we'll go and look at the Durbar room." And that actually we weren't meant to have gone, we, so we were all dressed and everything. We all went into the Durbar room, and there was the public looking in case. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly they get. <laughs> <laughs> It was I, I, watching the movie, I thought it was kind of really relevant now because it's kind of dealing with, you know, it's dealing with racism at that point. And there's been a rise in, you know, all around the world here in the United States of nationalism and racism. And I just thought it, I just felt like it was coming out at the right time because it, it really shows, it almost, uh, uh, tragically that, History repeats itself. In yes, um, yes, I'm afraid so. <coughs> no, I always liked um, <coughs> its politics, and I liked it being so provocative. I thought oh, this will cause trouble. But also, wasn't Abdul different than John Brown? That John Brown, you know, was always he knew he was a servant, but Abdul kind of went a little further. And didn't he get? Uh, well, he got promoted. He got, right. you know, she wanted to give him right. a knighthood. She, uh, I think, I think she gave him some money. But she brought all the family over, gave them a house right. and everything like that, much to the disapproval of the household, of course. And especially 
Bertie. And Bertie, I mean, loathed it. Bertie was he just. He really hated it. Bertie was a piece of work. You know, he yes, just he wanted her to d overeat and die so he could take I over. I know, but so s that line he has when he said, but I've only just arrived. He says, well, she said, oh, actually, we're going off to Scotland and none of you are come. You know, and he has this one line saying, but I've only just arrived. And you think, God, poor man. I mean, he had no, right. you know, he saw, he saw his parents in the morning a little. Right. He saw them in the evening a little, and that was all. And the rest of the children, because they had and nine yeah, they did have nine children. And she didn't like any of them, did she? <laughs> Not much, no. No, I read, there was an article about the movie, I think it was in The Guardian or one of the British newspapers that said that she loved sex, but she didn't love children. That's true. You know. <laughs> Somehow you don't want it really, you There's know, maybe a popular sentiment in this room. <laughs> <laughs> but apropos of just what you said, Susan, about, about the film being very, very pertinent at this moment, Eddie Izzard said the most wonderful thing to me, and I thought that would apply to this and, and, and to all of us. And he said about the whole business of the fact that he's a Muslim and everything, and he said, um, I've always thought it more important to be curious than suspicious. Right. And I thought that's that was a, wonderful a great, great thing That's to a say. wonderful line. And it, it was said about I mean, you know, I watched, rewatched Mrs. Brown yesterday. I hadn't seen it in a long time. And it was sad that everybody, of all the men she, that helped her, that she loved, or like Albert and then John Brown and then Abdul, they were taken, either they died or they were taken away from her. I mean, it's just like she wasn't allowed to be happy. You know, if she got to be happy, it would, you know, it caused gossip or problems with the rest of the um, Yes, but staff. she dropped off the bow before Ali was sent away. Right. Abdul was sent away, so right. she didn't know about that. No, no but you so know what he, I mean? She had still, those but still she ha was him. having difficulties. You know yeah. what I mean? There were still difficulties yeah. and they were, but still, you know, it's just like everything, Yes, you know, it wasn't easy for her. We can open this up to the audience. Um, well, first, first one. Um, I'd like to ask you, um, Ms. Kruz, um, Eddie Izzard was marvelous, but he's, uh, he's so serious. How did you pick him such a funny man? Well, there weren't any jokes in the part. Uh, Eddie actually has always wanted to be a straight actor and <coughs> regards the whole business of stand-up, at which he is simply brilliant, as a sort of distraction or a diversion in some way. What he wants to be is a serious actor, and at last... Someone had come along, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it wasn't very difficult. He was, he's wonderful in the film. Mm -hmm. he's wonderful, terrific. flatters the script in every way. Thank we you. were incredibly lucky to have him. Yes. Hi, um, Dame Judy, just thank you so much for your entire career. so much to all of my peers for sure and um, my friends on Facebook are going totally mental right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much and the direction was just beautiful. Such a such a death hand with such a possibly especially in these times in this country. I was kind of tense to see how this would play out and it was just beautifully done and beautifully shot and thank you both so much. Question? Right here. Me? Okay. Hi, Hi. Judy. Um, I heard you mention in an interview once that you try to learn three new things every day. What were the most important things that you learned while making this movie? Learn something new every day. Yes. Three new things. Yes, I do try and learn something new every day. Um, I've, I've asked this before, but this is such a sh showstopper um, that I'm going to... Uh, this is a word I learned in the summer, and it is, what is natadephophobia? That is an irrational, f it's true, an irrational fear of something. Now you tell me what that's an irrational fear of. Natadephophobia. Of nattering? Nats. 
Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's the irrational fear of being stared at by a duck. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what compoundophobia is? Compoundophobia is a fear of buttons. <laughs> oh, my God. And I have a friend who has it. Well, her husband has it. Loose buttons it's or buttons on no, clothes? Buttons on clothes or just buttons? Just general said. buttons. So he has a lot of zippers, <laughs> I would imagine. You know. Okay, back, right, you. Right. This is for Dave Dench. Um, uh, journalists are always so fond of saying that actors are born to play a certain role, especially in light of you revisiting this character. I was wondering if there's a role that you portrayed that you feel that you were born to play, whether or not it's on stage, film, or television. She wants to know that, 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 that um, a lot of actors, a lot of journalists say to an actor, you were, you, know, you were born to play this role. And she wants to know what role you feel, either in theater or television or movies, that you felt that you were born to play. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea, nor do I ever know what I want to play. All I want to do, really, is to have... I don't want anyone to offer me a part now. Oh, well, I want somebody to offer me a part. But I don't want anyone to offer me a part now that is remotely like Queen Victoria. You know, people for... Si I've been on the stage 60 years, and everybody says to me, oh, you're always playing queens. I'm not always playing queens at all. No. <clears throat> I'm not. I've played Queen Victoria twice, Elizabeth I once, Titania, Queen of the Fairies, and Cleopatra. Those are all the queens I played. Um, so the last thing, you know, uh, and the, I got the chance to play a really great woman uh, in a, a film called Notes on a Scandal, and she oh, was called... Yeah. She was, well, you see, you know, not, not a woman you want to come round for tea at all, is she? Or even anywhere near you. Uh, but a real challenge, uh, you know. It's her, you don't want to be asked to... I don't want to be asked anymore to play a woman of five foot one and three quarters who's in her 80s and who, you know, I don't want that anymore. I'm much too young to play Yes, that. definitely. Oh There's my, my friend. <laughs> There's my... Back there, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for the brilliant film, and I'll be watching to make sure both of you get Oscars this year. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's basically on history, where there was a mention of some kind of a rebellion of Muslims with Hindus or against it. I'm, I'm not sure what happened. The mutiny. The mutiny. <laughs> well, there was, a, there was what we call a mutiny. But, what, but, uh, but I discovered in the course of the, film, the Indians called the uprising. They started to... Um, a rumor got around, or maybe it's true, that... <coughs> the bullets were made with cow grease, or we, cow grease was involved. Am I? Is that right? The cow grease was involved in the in the bullets, and the Mus that was what the Muslims were really complaining about. In other words, that their religion was being insulted. But also the in the Hindus were also complaining about something. So there was this thing called the Indian Mutiny. And when I was a child, <coughs> you know, I learned things like that because it was part of our imperial history. Then I discovered that there's another way of looking at these things. We're learning it now. Gentleman over there. Yes, thank you. Would you uh, uh, talk to me about your experience uh, filming Philomena? <laughs> your experience. Was that, was that two ago? <laughs> Is it three? Yes. I, well, it was... I can't answer your question. It was good fun. <laughs> well, Steve Coogan is such a nice fellow. And, I, I, I mean, the truth is, exactly the same thing happened, that he and Judy used to go and sit in cars <laughs> and laugh. <laughs> the acting was sort of secondary. Uh, it, was, it, it was... Steve was so interesting. And it was really his... 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 Passion, I suppose, his care that drew, drove the whole film. You know, he'd bought the book. He was a lapsed Catholic himself. It, it was really, and, and it's a very, very moving story. And we also had Philomena 
Lee around. So we met her before we started filming. And suddenly, believe me, see the film, but meet Philomena Lee, because she is something else. And she, after all those things that happened to her and that life and everything, and that experience, she's got the most glorious sense of humour. Now, if I hadn't, <clears throat> although there are very funny things in the film, if I hadn't met her beforehand, I wouldn't have known to thread that kind of sense of mischievousness, in a way, that she has into the character. But I had the good fortune to meet her beforehand. I thought she was going to be such a different kind of woman. She was just wonderful. We brought her to Hollywood. Right. Yes? Right. I was, she came to Hollywood, didn't she? And right. she met the Pope. She'd been silent for 50 years. She came to Hollywood. You couldn't stop her talking. <laughs> <laughs> Did she talk a lot when she met the Pope, I wonder? <laughs> she met the Pope, yes. She did? Yes. That movie meant a lot to me because I went to Catholic girls' schools for nine years and have this aversion to penguins sometimes, you know, they say black and white. But no, really, believe me. <laughs> anyway, any more questions? Uh, the woman who has her hand up right there. The Balmoral scene, I, it looked really unpleasant, but I think no one could capture that. And no one, I mean, I can't see Americans doing that. The British just do such a great job of dealing with the, I mean, they were so uncomfortable. How uncomfortable was that now? The brow moral scene, if it was uncomfortable doing? Well, it was windy and it was raining. It was wonderfully miserable. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you mean? Yes, I, I don't know. Maybe we're very black in Britain. I mean, we just, we, you sort of know that that's, that's what Scotland's like in August. <laughs> It's glorious, though. Well, it's not only like it in August, it's like it in May and June and July. <laughs> it it's rains heaven. a lot and the Queen puts her coat on and says, right, everybody out. <laughs> and if you, if, you like, if you get a passion for it, which I have, then you really, really like it. And you have quite a hard time, as, as um, I've just told this story, so bear with me if anyone's heard it, but um, there is a scene when we were at Glen Affric in the boat, it was a scene with Ali and me in the boat. And uh, it's been cut because um, there's no way you could see the scene because uh, the two of us are sitting there and I'm uh, saying, isn't it beautiful? And he's saying, it's very like Af Afghanistan. <laughs> and I said, oh, really? I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, I, we could not stop. It's true, isn't it? It's absolutely true because you're just bitten alive. <laughs> But it's still glorious. It's still glorious. I wanted to ask you, because uh, your next film in no is coming out in November, uh, Murder on the Orient Express. With, and it re reunites you with Kenneth Branagh, who you've worked with on sta a lot on stage. And yes, a lot. A lot. And, um, and you're playing the part that Wendy Hiller originally played. That's right. Yes. And Princess Dragomirov, she's a Russian lady who sits in a lot of nice clothes and a lot of expensive jewellery and a, a couple of dogs and a, a Olivia Coleman as her kind of sidekick. And we sat in this train day after day. It was heaven. Heaven. <laughs> not very much to say. It was lovely. And Stephen, um, you're working on another movie too? No, I'm going back to make a television film. Oh, what are you making? About an English politician called Jeremy Thorpe. Ooh. And, oh, and who... Oh, oh, indeed. And who is, who is cast in that? Hugh Grant. Oh, right. Oh, that should be. <laughs> so it's a serious film. And also, there are two people who are no longer with us who were in... The production designer died? Is that who... Alan McDonald died, tragically, and Tim Pickett-Smith, yes. Smith, right. They're, I mean, he's, he's wonderful, and his production design is just glorious in this film. He really captures that, that time, and it was, you know, Tim Pickett-Smith was a wonderful, wonderful performer and actor, and he's terrific in this film. Well, I think, I think is there any other question? I, let's, we can, I think, one more question, but I think that's about all I can do. Okay, right over there, up with you with the glasses. She wants to know when you're going to make another film together. 
<laughs> I haven't a clue. <laughs> it would when, be great. when he's free. I, I, it doesn't work like that. I, I get sent material. I mean, on this film, I said, I'll only make this with Judy. It was easy. So I don't know, if a, you know, I don't know what's going to turn up next week. And I'm not clever enough to say, let's write a film for Judy. I, don't, I just don't think like that. Well, I think that's it, guys. Oh, no, because they're, they're over there. We need to wrap this up. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>